there's a lot of work that goes into building a dedicated home theater room. The kind of work that you don't necessarily realize until you're doing the stuff yourself and ask, what the heck did I get myself into? So in keeping with that very theme, welcome to episode two of my DIY home theater build series. Now a huge part of any project is getting the room or area you're working on ready for what you're about to do. Lots of things in this room need to be taken out and painted or modified in some way or just simply thrown out. Now my plan from the very beginning has always been to reuse things like the door and closet doors and paint them to match with the rest of the room. Things like the door handle, door jams, and most of the hinges and hardware for the closet doors would simply be replaced as they aren't overly expensive and are super easy to find. The curtains, blinds, and stuff like that are also going to be replaced as well as they don't really fit with the overall tone and look of the room, or at least the idea I have for the room. Plus, I need to use thermal-backed curtains to try and reduce some of the heat from the windows. The trim also needs to be vacuumed before being taped off to make sure that they're as clean as possible for the paint because honestly, it was pretty gross before. And hey, if you really wanted to watch me paint the trim, well... Okay, so it's been a couple days, maybe two or three actually, since I've recorded anything. I had scheduled the refrigerator and microwave installation uh, Wednesday at like between 7 and 1 p.m. Well, I woke up at home at our other house at around 7.30 in the morning, freaked out ran around, brushed my teeth, got in the car, forgot the camera. I could have used my phone, but I just decided to go ahead and paint the trim um, without it. And of course, the guys didn't show up until like 10.30 or 11 a.m. to install that stuff. So I painted the trim, it wasn't too bad. Um, I got a couple of spots like right here and then uh, kind of over here. And it's kind of on the trim, uh, the bottom pieces as well. Um, not super clean, but I'm hoping that the little edger tool I have will basically cover that with the dark gray paint that I'm using on the walls. So we have a couple things to do before we do get started. I am gonna remove the blinds. I also need to vacuum all of the walls because there's some stuff on there. I wanna make sure the walls are super clean. Also the window sills down here and this guy up here. I wanna make sure it's as clean as possible uh, when we put the paint on. I'm probably only going to need to do two coats, I'm thinking. Also, there's a little area over here that I'll probably just end up brushing on. It seems like the previous person that painted, you can kind of see the, the gray and then the white right here. They just, they didn't care. Also, I couldn't get this door jam off. I just decided to paint over it. It does match the black of the other ones that I bought. So I'm not too worried about that, honestly. And you can't really tell. I might just kind of touch up these little screw areas here. I did, however, paint the closet doors and we'll walk over here to the other room here. I'll kind of show you the before. This is what they look like. And then instead of going with the dark gray, I ended up going the matte black and I really, really, like them. I, I can't believe I like them so much. Uh, I'm gonna be sticking with these, sticking with this color for both these doors as well as the actual door to the entryway. Now, it won't look like that from the outside. It will actually look like this. If I close the door here, um, you can kind of get uh, an indication of what it will look like from the outside. So this is what you'll see. And then when you go inside here, and close the door, it'll actually be all matte black. And I'll be using the paint sprayer that we bought. Um, I'll walk out in the garage, show you that real quick. But basically I have it set up in my little paint spraying station here. I got the back of the door. That's the one facing out towards like the bathroom and the hallway and stuff. Masked off about four or five inches into the door. So we don't have to worry about overspray on the bottom. And this is just a super finish max by Home Right. Very awesome, haven't had to thin the paint at all. Um, and it's like a, the Sherwin-Williams matte black finish. There is a slight texture to it, which I actually don't mind for the doors at all. I wouldn't want that for the walls, but I'm not actually using that for the walls. I'm gonna just do some standard roller type stuff. So with all that out of the way, it's time to get started. I'm gonna take all of the outlets off. Uh, I will be replacing all the outlets with black outlets and black wall plates. I might actually end up just painting the wall plates that we have, depending on their condition. Although wall plates are pretty cheap, so I might just end up buying new ones. And there's a couple of things that I'll remove, like this uh, coax cable. I don't know why. I mean, who uses coax in 2022 for real? I might just go ahead and snip the end off of the Cat 5e cable because I will be running Cat 6 cable through that same hole. So uh, hopefully that won't be too much of an issue. But anyway, let's go ahead and queue up the time lapse.
So this was the last frame my camera captured of the painting process. Now, remember when I forgot my camera? Well, I also forgot to download the footage to my computer from my camera's SD card. And since I only brought the camera, microphone, and tripod with me, I did not have a spare card. I also forgot my iPhone tripod adapter, so that wasn't going to work. The idea of trying to hold my phone up and paint at the same time, well, it's just a recipe for disaster. Now, I did snap a few pictures to send to my wife, Trish, and honestly, I don't really think anyone needs to see the train wreck of me painting walls for the first time anyway. Now, this was also the last time I'd be working on the theater room for the next 20 days or so. The painting portion of this video was actually filmed near the middle of June 2022, and the date to move out of our rental house and into our newly purchased home was quickly approaching. We honestly still had a crap ton of packing to do at the old place, and since we were doing everything ourselves, we weren't hiring movers or anything, I needed to shift my priorities to getting us out of that house. I do want to give a huge shout out to my friend Danny for helping us on the day of the move. Without him, I don't know what we would have done, honestly. Thank you, Danny, so much for helping us out. So after we moved in and things settled a bit, I could get cracking on the theater room again. I did finally get the door painted matte black, like the trim and closet doors. However, I needed to make a detour and set up the office where both my wife and I work before I could do any further work to the theater room, but not before an update on the theater room to go over what's next and how plans have changed. So yeah, the theater room is uh, painted. Everything's done uh, paint-wise, got the trim walls, drop ceiling still needs to be installed. That is the next project after the office. Then we can get the Valencia seats in. Uh, I can put the bifold doors back in and the door back on, uh, which would be really great. Uh, it's kind of warm in here and that's because this stuff isn't really doing too much. So what am I gonna end up doing is, uh, I was gonna put insulation there, but uh, that's not really up to code and I don't wanna violate any codes or go crazy with anything like that. Basically, I have another one of these uh, sunshade things. I'm pointing where you can't see, yay. They're silver on the backside, black on the front. So I'm gonna put another one there in front, kind of where the, the front lip meets here. I got a couple more of these pleated shades I'm gonna put, and I also have a thermally backed curtain I'm gonna put up here inside the window seal, and then I'm gonna have another curtain like covering this whole wall. Originally, I was going to put the TV on this wall, I was gonna wall mount it, but as you can see, the walls here are kind of, they're like angled. So it's not just a right angle where it's like, bam, right here, 90 degree turn, bam, you're over here. I figured this is the, right up here, perfect front sound stage. So instead of wall mounting over here, the TV is gonna be on the stand, which we have right here. That, that was in all of my original videos. I'm gonna center it right here. We're gonna have the left and right speakers. Not really sure about in walls just yet. I'm going to work with what I have now, which are the Pioneer Andrew Jones speakers, you know, kind of entry level, but they're, they're okay. And then up here after the drop ceiling is installed, very important, I'm going to install a couple of overhead ceiling speakers for Dolby Atmos. And I say a couple right now because my receiver only supports two, but I will be upgrading in the future. So I'm going to go ahead and wire for six total speakers. So top front, top middle, top rear, just to have some flexibility. I'm also uh, going to run some speaker wire in the drop ceiling up here for back left and right surrounds. Again, even though my receiver doesn't support that, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and wire for it because I'd rather have that option in the future. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at right now in the whole process. Uh, I wanna try to get the office done today, completely done. Run a couple of Cat6 cables for the ethernet over there. I have to get up in the attic for that. So I'm trying to wait until it's later in the day to do that. And then if I get time today, I also want to install those pleated shades here, the curtain in the middle there in the window, and then the other window arch shade up top. So that's if I get time. I'm interested to see if I do that tonight, how it feels in the room tomorrow morning, because like I said, it gets kind of warm in here because all the heat off that window. So interested to see that. But anyway, with all that said, let's go ahead and get cracking on the office. Back to the office, it's a similar setup to what I had in our previous place with curtains on the walls to help reduce echo and reverb when recording. I also needed to run two ethernet cables to this room from the master bedroom where our router and network switch are set up. I figured that this room would be the most difficult to run cables to as I'd be running them outside for the last 10 feet or so. 
So I was like, you know what? Getting this done and out of the way would make things in the theater room a bit easier for running cables. I ran the Cat6 cable through this cable channel here that I installed. It is outdoor rated cable, so it's UV protected, all that stuff, but I figured the cable channel won't be able to hurt. Now, this was a pain in the butt. So originally, if we go down here, the Cat5e cable that was going into the house was going through that hole. There was no sealant or anything in there. I could literally see through the inside or the outside. That is not good any type of bugs or anything could get in there. So the problem really was the Cat5e cable came out, went up here, wasn't attached to anything, and went right through this hole up here, the smaller one, I don't know if you could see that. It was just completely cut on the inside. Uh, you'll see uh, when I go up in the attic how far it was, and for me to walk all the way over here to discover that was uh, heartbreaking. Where that hole is there, there was some coax cable that was going through that was connected to literally nothing. So I just piggybacked off of that. I had to drill the hole slightly bigger to get two Cat6 cables through. But once I did that, I was able to pull it all the way through. I also did apply sealant to any of the holes uh, that I drilled or that were already here. So right here, there's sealant in there. And then up here, I actually sealed both of the holes. This was the original one, the small one in the back and then the bigger one that I drilled uh, where the coax was. So both of those are sealed, no bugs are getting in there. So let's head up into the attic and I will show you what I did there. All right, so entrance to the attic there, we are up here and sorry for the flicker on the flashlight here, it's just the camera shutter speed. You can kind of see, uh, I ran the Cat6 cable here, it's a black cable on the ground and I had to run it all the way over there and I'll zoom in a little bit. So you can kind of see that bright area over there, that's where the vent is leading outside, the attic vent. And yeah, so I had to crawl all the way over there. Didn't want to damage the AC duct work. Uh, the cable is kind of draped over it there. Uh, but yeah, I, I basically crawled all the way over there where you see that bright spot. And yeah, the cable was snipped. And that was, a, that was a fun time. So I ended up running it all the way over here. Probably could have done a better job of running the cable, but my glasses are falling down. And then it, it kind of goes out over here and we'll go down to the garage, I'll show you that. All right, so coming off of the attic, you could see where I actually drilled a hole right here. They're just coming out. I'm actually gonna get some soffit or something to cover these up eventually, but it works for now. So it goes down all the way here. And then if we move this out of the way, it actually goes inside the house here. And on the other side is our router and our network switch. Our ONT from Frontier is actually right here. That CAC6 cable goes from here, terminates inside where the modem originally was, but with Frontier, you don't need a modem. I just use our router and it connects right to the ONT, but everything terminates in there and that's pretty much it. So here we are. The office is finished and I can finally get back to working on the theater room. It honestly feels good to make progress on both the theater room and the office because I'm sure you know that moving is only part of the process. Unpacking is a whole different ballgame. Now, the next episode will cover installing the drop ceiling and painting the ceiling tiles and oh man, that was a much more complicated process than I thought it would be. But I can't wait to share that with you and I'm super stoked for you to see how the room is coming along. Now, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that like button and let me know down in the comments section. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.